Shalom, it's following Yeshua. Welcome again to the rock. Um, so this is part two of the video I did yesterday about husbands loving their wives. And part two is this. The same way we as men um, should not be afraid or fear of what society may say about us because we love our wife, wives because of, you know, who they are, what they've done for us as men. You know, because there's a stigma on that. If you say, I love my wife, or I love my wives, for some reason people look at you like you're weak, or or that's just the way the world is. It's backwards, completely backwards. But I have no fear, uh, and I'm not afraid to say that I love my wives, and I say it proudly. Likewise, um, sisters, wives, you should not be afraid of the word submissive or submission and or obedience. You have to remember, we are a peculiar people. And as a peculiar people, we don't think the same way, we don't operate the same way that the world does. You know, it's hard to say we're a peculiar people when we have the same issues that the world does, when marriages fail at, at the same levels uh, or higher in the faith than, you know, than it does in the world. It's hard to say you're peculiar people. It's hard to say that when there are very few honorable men and women that will stand to what their vows say, to what the, you know, the book says. It, it, it's hard to claim you're peculiar people. You're not peculiar because you throw on fringes or, or have a beard or you know, throw on a head covering or a skirt. It doesn't make you a peculiar person. What are you doing? What is, your, what is the fruit of your life that's showing you know, that you're a peculiar person? So for women, you know, um, and wives specifically, you know, that word obedience, it, 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 it usually comes with some resistance and it shouldn't come from with resistance. You should be proud. The same way we men are, as I am, proud to say, you know, I love my wives. Uh, I will nourish them, I will cherish them, I will care for them, I will, uh, if it, hey, give myself for them if I have to. You should be able to, as a woman, have that same um, happiness, that same joy that same resolve when it comes to your obedience and your submission. As we read in was it, uh, Ephesians 5, 1 Peter 3, Sirach chapter 25 and 26, um, Numbers chapter 30, um, you know, it, it, it should not come with this, oh my gosh, you know, I'm afraid to tell my mom, I'm afraid to tell my, my dad, I'm afraid to tell my friends that I obey my husband because Again, that's that stigma. That stigma that's put on it is if you are a woman and you dare um, obey your husband or submit to your husband, then you look down upon you're weak, you're this, you're that, and you're not weak. It, again, it's the same thing for men. You're not weak for telling your wife you love them or wives you love them. As a, as a wife, you're not weak for obeying your husband. You're obeying the book, and that's what makes you peculiar. That's what makes you different. That's what makes you travel that narrow road instead of the broad road, which leads to destruction. The narrow road is not something that everybody's going to travel. So you should not be looking to your right and to your left to try and figure out how many people are on that road with you. There may be even times that you're on that road and you may find out that you may be the only one you can see in front of you or behind you. But you still have to know you're on the right road because that's what the book says. That's what the Bible says. And there shouldn't be a fear about that. You know, don't let your, you know, feminist friends or your... I like, I like to say all the time, don't talk, don't listen to your single girlfriends and your single mama tell you those things that are going to keep you single. You should not be listening to the advice of people who do not have the fruit, who do not have the uh, the example that what they're living is right. If you're a married woman, it's foolish to talk to a woman who's single, unless it's a, it's a mother in the faith who has been married over a long period of time. And uh, hold on a second. Sorry, my daughter was coming in and asked me a question. But it, does, it doesn't make any sense for you to listen to those people. You need to be listening to those people that, you know, have the experience. And if it's a mother in Israel, if it's an older woman in Israel, um, in this faith, let me say that, in the faith, then she should have the fruit to show. I digress. But when it comes to the, that word uh, obedience and submission, it applies the same way to you as love does for men. That's what the book says. That's what the Bible says. You know, it's not a, you know, and that's the one thing I love about the Bible is it's completely contrary to your, if it's completely contrary to your feelings or emotions or what you think, 
it's not it that's going to change. It was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Y'all's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What needs to change is our way of thinking. It's us. We need to change. So for you sisters, if you are a peculiar woman and you're traveling that narrow road, then you should be looking at obedience and submission not as something to be embarrassed about. Not as something to be looked down upon or frowned upon or something that you run from. It should be something that you are proud to do. The same way I am proud to love my wife. Proud. No regret. Not shy about it. Not hiding it. Proud. Because it goes completely contrary to the world. And that is okay. You know, um, because when it comes to marriage, you know, there are certain things that, you know, a man that is following the book, you know, he's just not going to tolerate. And disobedience is one of those things that rebellion, uh, uh, manipulation, um, gaslighting, anything like that. Those are just one of those things that we, we're not interested in. I'm not interested in all that stuff. I'm not interested in a woman who wants to do all this sort of stuff. You know, the, that's just something that I cannot tolerate in my house. That's something that my vision, the, the, the vision that y'all gave me, doesn't, I, I can't tolerate that. And I'm talking also, this means stop trying to submit to all these other people. The Bible says, submit to your husband. Obey your husband. You obey your father and you obey your husband. Stop trying to obey these leaders and teachers and pastors and everybody else that ain't those people. You can honor them. And you can respect them. But stop trying to give your submission and obedience to people that are not covering. I'm not talking about spiritual covering. That are not covering you. If, they're, if they are not covering you, stop trying to submit. Because what ends up happening is you waste your submission on somebody. Then you get hurt by the church, the camp, the ministry, the, the boyfriend. Don't, don't, not boyfriend either. Leave him alone. You shouldn't have a boyfriend anyways. But, mm -mm, husband. That means the betrothal stage and then once the consummation happens. But in that stage, whether it's betrothal or your, you know, the consummation has taken place because you're still married in the betrothal stage, um, that's when the submission comes. But too many women submit to all these broke back dudes who have ego issues and they want everybody in the world to submit to them because they simply exist. Now, I'm your pastor, submit to me. Huh? I want the wives to submit to me and I want the men to submit to me. Huh? What? Are you are you kidding me? You know, that stuff. Or, you, you know, these men who run around, they want you to call them shepherd. When the Bible clearly tells, says that there is one shepherd, he's the good shepherd. David said, Yah was my shepherd. Uh, uh, they said that, that, that there, there's one prophesied to be coming as a good shepherd. I mean, save your submission for your husband. Because oftentimes, what happens is because you submit to the wrong person in your life and you get hurt by Pookie or Ray Ray or Pastor uh, Johnson and Johnson because you submit yourself to them when you get burned you come out on the other side and you say well I don't want to submit to no man you should not be trying to just like what we as men you know if you have been married to a person they hurt you you know you may have loved a woman and, 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 he, and she hurt you to be running around hating on women is retarded to be running around saying every woman's foolish and every woman's stupid and they're all dogs and they're all this. You're just, you're just sad. You're a sad individual. But the like, the, the same thing applies to women. If you've been hurt because you submitted to a person and it got wrong, maybe it was even in marriage and it turned out wrong. The Bible doesn't say, well, because you got burned or hurt one time, you stopped submission. It doesn't say that. Abigail did not stop because Nabal was who he was. When she went with David, Guess what happened? She continued to submit. So don't take your past hurts from oh, I was with this person or in that person, this ministry and that ministry. Because I'm getting uh, emails from women who've been in part of ministries who came out and are messed up in the head as far as submission and obedience. They don't know who to submit to. They're trying to submit themselves to me. And they're a single woman. I'm like, wait a minute, you don't submit yourself to me. Well, who do I submit myself to? Your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. Well, then the problem would be that part. The problem would not be, you know, I need to run and submit myself to you because you just seem like a cool dude or I came to your channel. It doesn't mean you submit to me. That's foolishness. Your husband, that's what the Bible says. Wives, submit to your husbands. Wives, obey your husbands in everything. Numbers chapter 30 says, only the father 
and your husband can break the vow. It doesn't say follow Yeshua in there because you listen to his channel. It doesn't say Pastor Johnson can do it because you're part of his ministry. It doesn't say elder so-and-so can break it because you're part of his ministry. It says father. That's that's physical father, not, not spiritual father. Father and husband. Yah's very clear. So there should there, there there shouldn't be any miss, you know, it doesn't say your community lead. You should, no. Yeah, make you a servant. Brothers. So don't be afraid, sisters, to obey and to submit and to be proud of it. To be joyous that you have that opportunity. Because it's not something to be looked down upon or frowned upon. That's something that's beautiful. The same way uh, the, the love of a husband is beautiful. The love of a wife to her husband is beautiful. This is a beautiful thing. But it's being perverted and it's being defiled by all these different thoughts and all these different, you know, I don't want to stand up and, and, and be a light to this world. I don't want to be a light to other sisters that, that I can proudly say, I'm a submitted wife. I obey my husband. Don't be ashamed of your obedience and your submission to your husband. Don't be ashamed. It is what the book told you to do. And as you obey the book, many, many, many of them find that safety that the book also talks about by obeying and submitting to their husband, by being led by him, by pursuing his vision, by being his helpmeet. They see it and they are joyous of it. And the love you get from your husband is beyond power because I'm going to tell you something there is no love to you sisters as a love from your husband ain't nothing like it ain't nothing like it and I know because I talk to these brothers that love their wives dearly that would give their lives for them I talk to these brothers we fellowship together we talk to each other and they ain't nothing like it you see the, the peace and the joy in the, the wise faces ain't nothing like it you can tell Hallelujah. All right. You remember, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of y'all's word. Don't be ashamed of that life. Don't be ashamed of your husband. Don't be ashamed of submitting and obeying him. Let the world see your light. Let the world, and let them be convicted by it. Because a lot of women are being convicted now. They start to look at things and say, I can now understand why I'm single. I can understand now. Because I'm going completely contrary to what the book says. I'm not obedient, I'm not a submissive woman, and I don't want to submit, but I understand that that may be the reason why I continue to be single. And now they're starting to look at that. As, Pas as Passover comes, the Bible says, examine yourself. So right now, there should be a lot of self-examination happening amongst us in this faith. We should all be examining ourselves. We should all be looking at ourselves and looking at the, at the things and repenting truly from our heart, not walking in pride and arrogance and stupidity and foolishness and no. Anyways, bless y'all. Do not be ashamed of your submission and obedience. I'm saying it again. Shalom.